All right, so I'm trying something a little bit different. I actually lowered my camera a lot and then I just zoomed out to do more of the wide, uh, wide angle view. But anyways, um, I'm going to open up and disassemble this Dell XPS 13 9360. So first thing we're gonna do is remove all the screws from the bottom here using a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Um, there's also a PH0 or JS0 screw underneath this cover. So you wanna keep all the screws in order. The way I do that is I take the screw out and then put the flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove them. That way I always have the screws in the right spot and I don't mix them up. All right, it's very important because if the screws are different size, shape, and lengths, and you put the wrong screw in the wrong spot, you can actually damage your computer. All right, so we're gonna remove all these screws. If this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to repair or upgrade their device. All right, and if this video helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel so that I can continue making these videos for a living. Um, these computers are actually customer computers. Um, as I continue to put out more and more videos, I actually end up getting less and less customers. Um, so far, the YouTube pay is somewhat making up for that, so it's not too bad, um, but it'd be great if I help you save a bunch of money that you can also help me out. All right, so I switched to the PH0 or JS0 screw, screwdriver, and I removed that one screw. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this bottom cover. So let's see, this one, I don't know if we can lift it from the back here. Let's see, it looks like it's popping up a little. So I'm going on these corners and it pops up. Let's go ahead and work our way over to the side since we can pop up the little edge there. Okay, once we've done that, we can go along the side here it looks like, and we can pop that up. I'm using my fingernails. You can use plastic pry tools. Some people don't like that I use fingernails, but um, I mean, I have them, they're free. I don't have to worry about breaking all my plastic tools and buying a billion more, but there you go. So we pop that out. Okay, and here you can see the inside. So for some reason, this computer, the power light comes on and then it just shuts off and nothing happens. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna disconnect the BIOS or CMOS battery right here. So let me zoom in and show you this a little bit better. Okay, let me move this stuff out of the way. So this actually might work better. I might um, look for a shorter um, camera mount and then just hang it right above my head so that way I don't have to use a secondary monitor to see what I'm doing. Then I can see everything directly on my phone. But anyways, we're gonna disconnect the uh, BIOS CMOS or real-time clock RTC battery, whatever you wanna call it. All right, and then we're also going to disconnect the internal regular battery. So if you're wondering, um, so this is how I get it out. I just use my fingernails and I kind of just wiggle that connector. And as you can see, it pops out just like that. I'm gonna get this out so it doesn't plug itself back in. Okay, just like this, come on. It's being a little stubborn, there we go. All right, and then once I do that, I'm gonna open up the computer and then I'm gonna press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds. This will drain any power um, from the computer, well not all of it, but it'll make it a lot safer to work on and also it'll help reset the BIOS or CMOS, all right? So there we go, there we go, okay, 15 seconds. All right, anyways, I'm just gonna show a quick look inside here. Most of this stuff should be relatively straightforward to remove. If you're not sure how to remove anything, feel free to watch some of my other videos. I take apart most of them almost all the time. So if you're not sure how to do anything, you should be able to figure it out from watching a few of my videos. All right, so here you can see the battery model number here, PW23Y, all right? So again, I have my camera now in my face and it's kind of hard to see, but um, yep. All right, so we got that. Let's see what else. I might in the future make like a clear, um, it would be nice to have like a clear platform, like plexiglass, I can just rest my phone on top. Then I can see my phone completely and everything and move it all over the place. It'll be a lot easier to show what's all over my desk. Um, but anyways, here you go. You got the fan, of course. You got the LCD LVDS connector hidden underneath this. There's two screws to remove it, and then there's a pull that you pull the tab to remove it. All right, um, this is the connector for, it connects with this. I don't know if that's for a microphone or camera. I think there's only two 
pins there, so it's most likely for the microphone. Um, this little USB board here is connected with a cable all the way to this one here. Let me actually zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit more. Okay, um, the battery, if you're removing it, they're PH1 or JS1 screws here. So you're going to remove all those flat screws, and then there's a PH0 or JS0 screw here. Then all of this stuff is taped down, so you might want to peel that off. That's for the speakers. Um, you got the left speaker with the red and black wire going all the way over here to plug in, and then the blue and white wire for this speaker. They're both connected to the same spot. Disconnects just like the BIOS CMOS battery. You just grab the wings and you kind of just wiggle to pull it out. Okay, I'm not going to pull out all these other things, so I'm not sure what these connectors under the battery are, but uh, most likely trackpad. You got the LED um, board here too, so most likely one of those over here. I don't know which is which or what's what. Um, because I'm not going to pull the whole thing out. There's also the keyboard connector and the trackpad connector, of course. Um, but yeah, if you take the battery out, you should be able to see what's connected where and be able to figure it out. You got the wireless card here, and then you got another connector here. So this goes into the screen. This is most likely actually for the um, camera. Uh, it could also be for the, what do you call, the touchscreen. And you got the DC jack charge port here. There's one screw. And this design, this is the stupid design where the connector actually goes underneath the motherboard. So underneath the motherboard, it wraps around underneath where this screw is for the motherboard. So yeah, if you wanted to remove this charge port, you will have to take a bunch of the motherboard screws out to lift this side of the motherboard up and pull it out. I actually have a video that shows how to do this on similar models. Um, I think they're all Dell XPS models, so if you search Dell XPS charge port or DC jack, it's been repaired. You'll probably find a video for that. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and see if it's going to power up now. I'm going to reconnect the uh, BIOS or CMOS battery here. Just line it up, push that in. Same thing with this battery. Okay, Make sure you have it completely lined up before you push it in because you don't want to put this connector in crooked and then damage the internal pins on the on the motherboard side. All right, so there we go. We, we reconnected all of that. Let's go ahead and power it up. Actually, the power button light is on already, which is weird. Um, I don't know why it's turning itself on, so that might be a bad sign. It might not be able to turn on, so we'll see what happens. It turned itself on. Let's go ahead and push the button again, and nothing happened. As you can see, it's staying off, so that's not good. So most likely this thing has a motherboard issue. I am going to plug it in and see if anything comes up, but um, as far as resetting the BIOS or CMOS, it doesn't look like that helped. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, there's the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. So if you want to upgrade your SSD, you can. You do want to either clone your SSD over to the replacement SSD before you pull this out, or you want to create a bootable Windows installer or Linux or whatever you want to use uh, before you pull that out. Um, otherwise, you're going to have no operating system when you put the new SSD in. All right, so anyways, we're going to put the cover back on. Let's zoom out. This actually works pretty well. I mean, it's not as easy for me to see what I'm working on, so it would be nice to make a little plexi plexiglass kind of stand or something. We'll see. Um, but for now, it looks like it works. All right, so we're going to do this. It's a little bit easier because when I go to um, sync my camera to the screen, every so often it doesn't connect, and then I have to restart my phone. Sometimes it still doesn't work, and then I have to restart my phone again. So... Yeah, the other option is I can use like a little dock thing, but I don't know. Sometimes those docks have issues too, so there we go. Replace that screw, and let's just put back the rest of the screws. Anyways, that's pretty much all there is to this model. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, again, please like, subscribe, share my channel with others. Um, if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps. And it's greatly appreciated. And yep, other than that, thanks for watching. You're welcome to stay as I put back the rest of these screws. Uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get back all these screws in. Oh.
think right now it's more blurry because it's in uh, the wide, uh, wide, what is it, wide view or whatever, wide angle lens. But um, yeah, all right, thanks for watching. Let's drop this bike. Okay, if you're wondering, um, the Dell did eventually come on. The power button light did keep going off and on, and I had to turn it on a few times. Um, it cycled on its own. Once it stopped turning on by itself, I turned it back on, and then I just let it go, and it eventually came back on. Most likely, it was detecting the BIOS was reset, so it was just power cycling itself. And, yep. But anyways, good to go, and hopefully this video helped again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.